Newly released court documents gave us a better look at the case against Paul and his father Ruben Flores and the disappearance and murder of 19-year-old Kristen Smart. It seems Paul allegedly has a specific fetish for forcing himself on women, especially when they're drugged or inebriated. Which is exactly how Kristen Smart was when he came across her after a party at Cal Poly on March 25, 1996, according to the prosecution. Today, I'm going to tell you about the homemade rape practice tapes prosecutors say they found at Paul's house and what they found when detectives finally dug up the yard under Ruben Flores' deck. I'm Chris, and this is True Crime Recaps. Let's start with the Google searches. One of Paul's favorites was real drunken girls drugged and raped while passed out, according to detectives. They also found homemade rape and fantasy videos on hard drives he labeled practice and teen drive when they served a search warrant on his house in San Pedro, California in 2020. The man himself can be seen having sex with women who look pretty out of it. One woman had a ball gag in her mouth, according to a report by the LA Times. On the teen drive, he had a video showing a masked man spying on a schoolgirl before breaking into her house, drugging and raping her. Prescriptions for tramadol and flexoril were also found. Those are typically prescribed for pain relief or as muscle relaxers. But detectives say that if they're mixed with booze, they could knock an unsuspecting woman out. Establishing patterns of behavior will be critical to proving Kristen was raped and murdered since her body has never been found. Prosecutors say Paul has been indulging his rape fantasies since high school when he used to grope co-workers at his after-school burger job, and one woman says he and another guy raped her when they were only 15. In college, at Cal Poly, he was known as Chester the Molester, or Creepy Paul, because he was the guy who would drink heavily follow girls around and make perverted comments. Prosecutors say he hasn't changed. After seeing him on the news for Kristen's murder, other women came forward to say they recognized him as their alleged rapist. The LA Times shared more information about those assaults. One woman said she met Paul in a bar close to his house in 2008 and he offered her a glass of water. Her memory of what happened after she drank it is hazy, but she said she came to with Paul on top of her and a ball gag in her mouth. He says he only used it so his roommate wouldn't hear anything. According to SanLuisAbispo.com, more than 30 women have come forward with allegations of sexual misconduct by Paul. But it was the claims of two women that say he raped them in 2011 and 2017 that led to the release of these court records. In July 2021, the district attorney made a play to add their rape charges to his trial. Unfortunately, the judge said no, which means the jury won't know that what he's accused of doing to Kristen in 1996 was not a one-time thing. Now, investigators say they have a witness who saw Reuben, Paul's mother, and her boyfriend move Kristen's body out of her hiding place under his deck in Arroyo Grande, which is only about a half an hour from the Cal Poly campus. When police searched Ruben's property in March 2021, they found a four foot by six foot anomaly in that spot indicating the ground had been dug up, filled, then dug up again and refilled. Kristen was about six feet tall. Forensics also found human blood in the area but weren't able to get any DNA out of it because it had been there so long. They did find red, blue, brown, black, and light-colored or no-colored fibers in the disturbed soil. When she disappeared, Kristen was wearing red pumas, black shorts with white stripes, and a light gray top. Beyond the forensic evidence, there's some other circumstantial evidence to know about. One of Ruben's longtime renters said the access door to get under the deck was always padlocked shut, and the man wouldn't even let a plumber in there when the kitchen sprung a leak. Instead, he turned the man away and told him he would fix it himself, according to the LA Times. He's now been charged as an accessory after the fact. Paul Flores has long been the prime suspect in this case. But here's an interesting piece of trivia. Scott Peterson was also a student at Cal Poly when Kristen disappeared. He would have been 24 at the time. 
On Christmas Eve in 2002, he murdered his wife Lacey and their unborn son Connor. And a year later, the Modesto Bee reported he was being eyed for a possible link to Kristen's case. It took 25 years for murder charges to finally be filed against Paul, but prosecutors now officially believe what internet sleuths have long been saying. He offered to walk Kristen home after a party they were both at. Whether he dosed her drink or she partied a little harder than she normally did, we don't know. But around 2.30 a.m., she was being helped back to her dorm by a girlfriend when Paul showed up, quote, out of nowhere and offered to help since her room was in the next building next to his. As far as anyone knows, she never made it back to her own bed, but it was Memorial Day weekend and both her roommate and Paul's roommate were gone. So there's no one there to say exactly what happened or when. But the very next day, he turned himself in for a DUI and you can see his black eye in his mugshot. When he finally was interviewed by campus police seven days later, that black eye was fading, but they spotted several scratches on his arms and legs. He told them the injuries were from basketball, but a friend said he had them before the game. Two weeks later, the police asked him to take a polygraph, and he went white and refused, but he did agree to another interview. Then his story about where he'd gotten that black eye changed again. This time, he said he'd actually hurt his eye on the steering wheel of his truck while installing a new stereo. He didn't say so at first because he thought it would sound stupid. What actually sounded stupid was the statement he made to a friend later. Reportedly, he said he had no idea where he got the black eye. He claimed he just woke up with it. About a month after Kristen's disappearance, police brought two teams of cadaver dogs to his dorm. Each of them independently alerted to the smell of human remains on Paul's bed, his waste paper basket, and the telephone. Now they're saying Paul used the phone to call his dad, Reuben, for help disposing of Kristen's body. Police believe Paul especially needed his father's help because he didn't have a car on campus. Unfortunately, they didn't search his house for a couple of months after the disappearance, and when they did show up back in 1996, they didn't bring the dogs or search the family's two trucks. Now they won't have a chance. Over the next few months, one truck was traded in and the other was reportedly stolen. Various searches of his mother and father's respective houses over the next few years turned up little evidence. Much of the credit toward the recent breakthroughs, witnesses, and arrests goes to Chris Lambert's Your Own Backyard podcast in a conversation with Dateline when asked why he thought it took so long to get this far with the case. Chris said, quote, the biggest mistake I think the sheriff's department made was that the first sheriff commented within one year of investigating that if Paul Flores didn't talk, they would never be able to solve this. That was a huge judgment error. <laughs> I mean, is that the new level of police work? Suspects have to confess or no crimes can be solved? Thank goodness the current sheriff felt a little differently when he took office in 2011. One of the tips he followed up on for the first time since Kristen's disappearance 15 years earlier was reported on by the LA Times. Apparently, in 1996, a woman was at a party with her boyfriend and Paul was there. When a news clip about Kristen's disappearance came on TV, Paul had this to say. I was at a party with this bitch and all she did was lead me on. I finally had enough of her shit so I took care of her. I buried her either under or next to the skate ramp out at my place in Husana. Wow. So that's another reason he was known as Creepy Paul. Husana is a picturesque community about 20 miles from San Luis Obispo. Detectives did a search on this area but didn't find anything. But a civil lawsuit filed against Paul's parents says there is compelling evidence that Kristen's remains were scattered in the Husana area. The district attorney says they believe they know where her body is but don't want to disclose it outside of trial. Although if they do know where she's at, she hasn't been returned to her family as of yet. So. What's Paul been doing since college? At school, he was a food science major, but not long after Kristen disappeared, he dropped out, then went on to rack up three more DUIs to add to the one he has already had. He's never been charged with a violent crime. 
Although his ex says they broke up because she said he was physically abusive, which tracks with a 2016 interview the Daily Beast did with four women who said he sexually assaulted them. One of them was his cousin. And the circumstances back up the prosecution's statement about Paul's twisted fetish. They were all drunk or drugged and taken advantage of. Except Kristen didn't survive what happened to her that night. Bizarrely, one more side note about the Your Own Backyard podcast. Court records revealed that prosecutors taped Paul's phone in early 2020 and caught a strange conversation between mother and son. Apparently, his mother told him to start listening to the podcast so they could punch holes in it. Her words were, wherever we can punch holes, maybe we can't. You, you're the one who can tell me. Mm Mm-hmm. Both Paul and Ruben are pleading not guilty. Paul is awaiting trial behind bars, but his mother bailed out his father in April 2021. But as of right now, no charges have been filed against Paul's mother or her boyfriend. And that's your recap. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, please give this a like and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Until next time, take care.